I wonder what time it is. Mission story. That's right. Anna's like our mission story announcer every time. <laughs> our mission story today is coming from another part of our map here. And this story is found in this book called Timmy T and Other Stories from Far Away. The story I want to tell you today is entitled Struggle with the Snake God. So it talks about a boy whose name was Paul. And when Paul was growing up in a village out there in the Congo, the people of his village all worshipped the snake god. They believed that there was a snake god that was always watching them. And it would send all of its snakes, the real snakes that they would see in the jungle, that those snakes would be there watching them and reporting to the snake god. And if anybody ever got bit by a snake for real, it was because they were being punished by the snake god for doing something wrong. And that was what the mommies and daddies would say to the little children. If you aren't nice to your brother, the snake is going to come get you because the snake god is angry at you. If you don't obey your daddy, the snake's going to come bite you to punish you for the snake god. Everybody was scared of the snake god, not just the kids, but the adults and the grandparents, everybody. They were always nervous and worried the snake god was going to get angry with them. But as Paul grew older, he started hearing that there were places where people maybe didn't worship the snake god. And he liked that idea because he hated snakes. He didn't just hate snakes because he was scared of the snake itself, but because it always made him think of the snake god. He thought, I wish there was no such thing. I wish I didn't have to be afraid of a god who would send snakes to bite me. But he started hearing, hey, there's other parts of the country and other parts of the world where people don't worship the snake god. And he thought, when I get older, I want to learn about that. I want to learn to not have to worship the snake god. Well, when Paul got old enough to, to live on his own, he left the village and he went walking through the jungle and walking through the fields until he got to a bigger town. And there he got a job working with a man and he would go traveling with this man and they were, the man was a trader. So Paul got to go uh, traveling with this man as he would go from town to town trading objects and trading food. And Paul learned, yeah, lots of people don't believe in the snake god. Some of them believe in other crazy gods though and other gods that are scary too. Gods that have demons working for them. Gods that have beetles working for them. Gods that are mean. And Paul started thinking, maybe I just don't want to believe in any god at all. Sounds like all these gods are mean and really, really scary. But then Paul found out about the true god. The trader that he was working for had died and Paul didn't have anybody to pay him any money to do work anymore. He didn't know what he was going to do. And then he found some people who worked at a mission school and they said, it's okay if you don't have any money, you can come here. We'll, we'll let you live with us and you can work with us and we'll even teach you some things. And they taught him about, who do you think? Jesus. They taught him about Jesus. Jesus didn't send snakes to, to watch people and to bite them when they were naughty. Jesus wasn't trying to go out and scare people. And Jesus was stronger than any wicked, evil demons or snakes or anything. And when Paul learned all this, his heart was happy for the first time. He thought, how wonderful! I don't have to be scared of God. God loves me. And he's stronger than snakes or snake gods or Satan or anybody. I know what, said Paul. I can't just keep this to myself. I got to go back to my village. I got to go back where all my family and friends are that I grew up with. I got to tell them too, because they're still worshiping the snake god. They're scared of the snake god. I'll go tell them. Won't they be happy? But do you know what? When he went back there to teach the people about Jesus and how Jesus is stronger than the snake god, the people were not happy. They were glad to see Paul because he'd been gone for a long time. They were glad to see the nice clothes he was wearing now because he, he certainly had you know, changed since he had left the village. He looked different. He dressed differently. They thought that was very interesting. But then when Paul said, hey, you guys, there's something even more interesting. You need to hear about the God that I learned about. And they said, oh, what kind of a God is it? He said, it's not a scary God. He's the real God, the God above all. And he made the whole world. And they said, oh, that's interesting. And they said, and he even made a garden with humans in it. And they said, oh, that's interesting. And he said, and then a snake came and they went, oh, we're scared of snakes. He said, yes, I used to be scared of snakes too. But you know what? God beat that snake. That snake was just Satan. And he defeated him when his son came to die on the cross. And the people started getting out of their seats and walking away from Paul, sneaking off and going, oh, we don't want to listen to you. You know why they didn't want to listen? Because they thought if they started listening to what Paul said about a snake that was beaten, a snake that was not strong and powerful, the snake god would get angry with them and he'd send snakes to bite them. Remember, that's what they believe, right? 
If they ever make their snake god angry, the snake god will send snakes to bite them. So they didn't want to hear anything about it. In fact, the next day they came to where Paul's house was in the village and they said, you have to leave. You have to go away. We don't want you here because you'll make the snake god angry at us. Leave right now. And they even had some knives in their hands and they were pointing at him and said, go away. If you ever come back here, we'll stab you with our knives because we don't want the snake god to be angry with us. Oh, that's so sad. These were even family members of Paul who were saying it. How do you think Paul felt inside? He did feel sad. But you know what? As he walked away from the village out into the jungle, he thought to himself, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up on these people. I'll make my home right outside their village. They told me to leave their village, but I don't have to leave the jungle. I'm going to make my home out here. So he made a little home out in the jungle nearby one of the paths that the people would take to go back and forth to their gardens. He would never go into the village, but whenever anybody would come walking by his path, he would call out to them and say hello and be friendly. And if he got a chance, he'd talk to them about how God loves them and how the Bible teaches us that Jesus is strong. And some people did get a little curious. One little old lady who had been afraid of the snake god for many, many years she even told Paul, you know, I would like to learn more about what you were saying about how there's a, someone named Jesus who, who died and, and how he, well, you know, how he, you know, how he, how he beat the snake. And Paul said, sure, come on, we can have a meeting sometime in my hut. Well, as Paul was waiting for her to come and visit him someday, one night Paul had a vision. He didn't know it at the time. He thought it was a real thing at first. He was in his hut sitting there as the evening was coming out and he noticed a bright light shining outside his hut. He'd never seen a bright light at night other than a torch, but it didn't look like a torch, like, a, like fire. It was really, really bright. They had no electricity, no electric lights or flashlights or anything. He didn't understand where this could be coming from. He came outside, he looked around, and I want to tell you exactly what it says in the book. When he came out, he saw a circle of light brighter than the sun. In the circle, he saw a snake with its head cut off. And as he watched, the snake struggled and then died and lay lifeless on the ground. And just like that, the light went away and the snake was gone. And Paul realized that wasn't something real. I was seeing like a dream, but I was awake. It was a vision. This is like when God would send visions to people in the Bible. God is sending me a vision. What does it mean? Let's see. It means that the snake got its head cut off and it died. It means that God is strong in the snakes. I shouldn't be worried. And that God is going to defeat the snake god of this village too. And it made him so happy so that he wasn't even afraid to tell the little old lady when she came the next day. She came and she said, I, I want to learn more about, about what you were saying. He said, come on in. I'll tell you all about it. Come on into my hut. And so they came into his hut and they sat on the ground around a little low table. They were sitting on the ground there and he started talking to her and he opened up the Bible and he was reading to the Bible, reading from the Bible to her. When all of a sudden, there was a huge disturbance. The little door to his hut flung open and in rushed a woman who looked completely scary and, 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 and weird. It was the snake goddess. She was like the priest of the village who was in charge of worshiping the snake god. She came in and she was dressed really strange and she had paint all over her face and dirt in her hair and she was screeching and she was making noises. Ah! She came running inside and she jumped on top of the table. And Paul looked at her and the old lady looked at her and they waited to see what she would say and she said, I am here for the snake god. The snake god spirit says, you will die! You will die right now for saying the snake god is not powerful! And just as she said that, do you know what happened? Paul felt something around his neck. It felt like a snake coiling around his neck. And he reached up his hand to grab it off, because who would want a snake around the neck? But you know what? There was nothing there, and yet he could feel it. It was starting to tighten around his neck like a ball constrictor, strangling him. And he couldn't even feel it. it was an invisible snake. What do you think it really was? Satan. It was Satan. It was one of Satan's evil angels just choking Paul. And Paul tried to breathe. I couldn't breathe. What is he going to do? And then he remembered his vision from the night before. What had he seen in the vision? What had he seen in the vision? His head was cut off. Whose head was cut off? The snake. the snake with a head cut off. And he remembered, that means that God's going to conquer the snake God. God's power, power, God is more powerful than the snake God. And with the last breath that he had in his throat, he yelled out as loud as he could, Jesus save me! And even though 
His voice was barely loud enough for the old woman on the other side of the table to, to hear it as he was struggling and as the snake goddess was dancing around, screeching and yelling. Jesus heard him. Jesus can hear you no matter how loud or quiet your voice is whenever you say, Jesus, save me. And immediately, that feeling of something tighter on his neck disappeared. Immediately, Paul could breathe again. And immediately, the priest god, the snake goddess that was on the table fell over unconscious. <laughs> he fell right on the ground. And Paul looked with his eyes wide open. The little old lady looked with her eyes wide open. And after a few seconds, the snake goddess lady woke up and she said, Where am I? What's going on? Who is this? And she ran out of the door. And the little old lady ran out the door. The little old lady ran out the door and went back to the village. And she told everyone she met, You won't believe what just happened. You won't believe what just happened. I was over there. You know where that guy Paul that we chased out of our village? The one who says that he knows a God stronger than the snake God? I was in his hut and the snake goddess came in and everybody went, oh. And then the snake goddess said that he was going to die for what he's been saying about the snake God. And everybody went, oh. And then he started to choke and everybody went, Oh, of course. Yep, yep. And he must be dead now. Yep, because when the snake God gets you, you can never escape. No one is stronger than the snake god. And then the little old lady grinned a big smile and said, you're wrong! Because he said, Jesus save me! And the snake god left him alone and he's alive! And the snake goddess got thrown to the ground unconscious and she ran off scared. Jesus is stronger than the snake god! And the people of the village didn't even know what to do with that information. They just never thought that there could be anybody stronger than the snake god. And they were so excited and, and, so, and so amazed by this that they just all came rushing to Paul's hut. They wanted to see that he was still alive. And they could see around his neck, you could see the red marks from where he had been choked, even though you couldn't have seen a snake. Remember, it wasn't really a snake. It was an evil angel. And they saw the red marks. They saw Paul smiling at them, still alive. And they never saw the snake goddess again. She left the village. When she found out that there was a god who was more powerful than the snake god, she ran away from there. She never wanted to be around those people anymore. She left. And the people of the village were so glad, they realized they didn't have to be afraid of the snake god anymore. They didn't have to be afraid of snakes coming to get them to punish them anymore. And they were so glad to hear what Paul had to tell them. They said, please teach us more, teach us more. And you know, the whole village listened to what Paul had to say. And day by day, they learned more and more until finally many of them gave their hearts to Jesus. And many of them said, we want to follow Jesus more. We want to have a church in our village. We want to have a school in our village. We want to follow whatever Jesus says because he's stronger than the snake God. Isn't that right, you guys? Isn't Jesus stronger than any other thing out there? Any scary thing out there? Jesus is stronger than that. Any scary thing, anything that maybe makes you worried, you're scared of something, something makes you nervous, Jesus is stronger than that. And if you're ever in a situation where you're feeling like, oh, I don't know what to do, I don't know what's going to get me out of this problem, the only thing you need to say is, Jesus, save me. And Jesus is right there. He's got his power all there for you, just like he saved Paul. Isn't that story awesome? All right, let's say a quick prayer, thanking God for the story of Paul and, his, and how he trusted in Jesus and how Jesus saved him. Let's close our eyes. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. We have learned a lot from the story of Paul and his struggle against the snake god of the village. We are so glad that your son Jesus, by dying on the cross, has made himself more powerful than anything else, including Satan and any of the tricks he uses to keep us scared and nervous. Help us to remember whenever we are scared, whenever something seems too powerful for us, to just ask Jesus for help because Jesus' power is stronger than anything else. We love you very much. Amen.